This is Air Force One, perhaps the most recognizable aircraft on Earth. But look closer. It's not just a plane. It's a flying fortress, a communications hub, and an unmistakable symbol of American power wrapped in that iconic blue and white paint scheme. And here's the kicker. Every minute this marvel spends in the air costs American taxpayers exactly $3,433. Do the math, and you're looking at $206,000 per hour of operation. But what are we really paying for? Why does moving a single person require such an extraordinarily expensive transportation system? Picture this. You're 45,000 feet above the Earth's surface, cruising at 575 miles per hour while simultaneously running the world's most powerful country. That's precisely what Air Force One enables the president to do. The current presidential fleet consists of two highly customized Boeing 747-200s, designated as VC-25As by the military. But calling these planes customized barely captures the reality. These aren't just modified commercial aircraft. They're essentially flying White Houses, purpose-built to serve as mobile command centers. Each aircraft has three levels and offers 4,000 square feet of floor space, roughly the size of a large American home, but packed into the fuselage of a jumbo jet. The president's area includes a large office, conference room, and private quarters with a bathroom and a shower. There's even a medical suite that can function as an operating room, staffed by a doctor permanently assigned to the president. This redundancy extends beyond the systems of the aircraft themselves. There are always two identical planes, partly for security through obscurity. Hence, no one knows for sure which one is carrying the president, but also to ensure there's always a backup aircraft available. However, Air Force One's truly remarkable features are the ones you can't see. Look at this control room. It's the heart of what makes this aircraft so special. Air Force One is equipped with 85 telephones, multiple fax machines, wireless internet, and military-grade encrypted communication systems. The president can make secure calls to anyone in the world from 45,000 feet, even during a nuclear blast. Speaking of nuclear blasts, Air Force One's electronic systems are hardened against electromagnetic pulses, or EMPs for short, that would disable conventional aircraft electronics. Its fuselage is armored, and it's equipped with advanced electronic countermeasures, including defensive flares, electronic jamming equipment, and technology to divert heat-seeking missiles. Though the exact specifications remain classified, aviation experts confirm the aircraft can withstand significant external threats while maintaining full operational capability. And it can do all of this indefinitely because of this feature. Known as aerial refueling, this practice involves flying within 75 feet of a KC-135 stratotanker like this one and taking on fuel while still flying. Though rarely practiced for security reasons, this capability means that in a worst-case scenario, the commander-in-chief would continue to lead the nation from the skies for days or even weeks if necessary. And he would be doing so with one of the best aviation engineering plants in the world. The engines powering Air Force One are themselves engineering marvels. The current VC-25As use four General Electric CF680 C2B1 high-bypass turbofan engines that each generate approximately 56,750 pounds of thrust. These engines were selected not just for their power, but for their exceptional reliability record. According to General Electric's internal data, these engines have accumulated over 50 million flight hours with commercial operators worldwide, and their reliability rate exceeds 99.98%. But what makes these engines truly special are the modifications for presidential use. Engineers apply special acoustic treatments to reduce the engine's noise signature, and additional shielding protects critical engine control systems from electromagnetic interference. Perhaps most crucially, the engines feature specialized sensors that can detect potential failures before they occur. This allows for preventative maintenance to occur before a problem arises that ensures the president is never stranded due to mechanical issues. And the engines definitely need to be reliable. 
This is because Air Force One is arguably the most well-traveled aircraft in the world. The presidential air fleet logs hundreds of thousands of miles each year. Over the past 50 years, Air Force One has ferried the president to nearly 140 different countries, spanning almost 7 million miles of air travel. These trips include 58 trips President Obama made during his two terms and 25 trips President Trump made during his first term. This level of activity creates enormous logistical challenges that most people never see. A presidential trip begins days or even weeks before Air Force One takes flight. A C-17 Globemaster cargo aircraft flies ahead, carrying the presidential limousine, Marine One helicopter, and other essential equipment for any journey. In fact, the president rarely flies alone. Air Force One typically travels with backup aircraft and aerial security provided by the Air Force. All of this choreography of a president's arrival is a testament to precision planning. When Air Force One touches down in a foreign country, it does so with perfect timing. Every flight is coordinated with security teams already on the ground, communication specialists who have established secure links, and advanced teams who've planned every moment of the president's stay. Nothing is left to chance. It's like watching an intricate ballet where every dancer knows their exact role and timing down to the second. The complexity of these operations becomes even more apparent when examining the fuel requirements. Air Force One typically carries approximately 53,000 gallons of jet fuel, which is on par with your long-haul international commercial aircraft. However, unlike commercial aircraft that often fly with just enough fuel to reach their destination plus a safety margin, Air Force One always operates with substantial fuel reserves. This is necessary to ensure the president doesn't have to refuel in not-so-friendly places, which increases fuel costs. But the increased amount of fuel isn't the only thing driving up fuel costs. During overseas trips, any foreign fuel put in the aircraft must undergo rigorous testing and security measures. Special teams from the Air Force Petroleum Agency test and secure the fuel supply before it ever reaches the aircraft's tanks. Specially trained and vetted technicians analyze each gallon for contaminants, proper composition, and potential security compromises. This process, known as fuel authentication, is implemented worldwide at every refueling stop, adding considerable complexity and cost to presidential travel planning. But the extra security measures extend far beyond fuel, driving up the costs further. As part of its security protocols, the Secret Service employs a layered security approach with concentric rings of protection surrounding the aircraft. This includes counter-surveillance teams that monitor airport perimeters, explosive detection specialists who sweep the aircraft and surrounding areas, and counter-sniper teams positioned at strategic vantage points. Even something as seemingly simple as the food served aboard Air Force One represents an intricate security operation. Unlike commercial flights where catering services deliver pre-prepared meals, Air Force One employs military chefs who prepare meals inside a specialized, secure facility. These culinary professionals, typically drawn from the Navy's Presidential Food Service, undergo extensive background checks and observe strict food handling security protocols. Even the water used for coffee and tea is transported from trusted sources in the United States. These high operating costs are also represented in the unique requirements for the communication suites on board. The president's various ways to communicate require exceptional engineering to maintain connectivity anywhere on Earth. To accomplish this, the Air Force employs a sophisticated multi-band antenna suite capable of simultaneously connecting to military satellites commercial satellites, and ground-based networks all at the same time. This communication system, known as Quarterback, provides encrypted voice, video, and data channels with automatic redundancy. If one communications path fails, the system instantly switches to alternate methods without disrupting the president's calls. And if that were not enough, the rapidly evolving security situation around the world means the technology and practices surrounding Air Force One must continually change. After the attack on the United States, Air Force One's security protocols were completely overhauled. President George W. Bush remained airborne during that crisis for nearly eight hours as the situation unfolded, which proved that having Air Force One as a mobile command center during national emergencies was definitely needed. 
since that fateful day. The aircraft has incorporated additional defensive systems. These defensive capabilities are continuously upgraded as new threats emerge, creating a perpetual cycle of security enhancement that contributes significantly to the aircraft's operational costs. And these measures even extend to something as simple as the paint scheme. It's not just about aesthetics. The current blue and white colors serve both diplomatic and tactical purposes. While the distinctive look makes the aircraft instantly recognizable worldwide, the paint forms a key part of the aircraft's defensive measures. These colors incorporate specific radar-absorbing compounds that reduce the aircraft's radar signature, which make it more difficult for hostile systems to track. The exact composition of these specialized paints remains classified. Still, with no close calls even in war zones, it is a safe bet these systems have played a significant role in protecting the president. But of course, none of this stuff comes cheap. Each current VC-25A aircraft costs about $325 million when purchased. After adjusting for inflation, the total price tag reaches approximately $800 million per plane in today's dollars, and that's before they even leave the ground. To put that in perspective, the president's flight to Japan for a diplomatic summit might cost taxpayers around $2.5 million just in operating expenses, not including security, advanced teams, and other support costs. And if you thought that was a lot already, the figures get even worse as the Air Force looks for a replacement for its aging fleet of BC-25s. In 2018, the Air Force signed a $3.9 billion contract with Boeing to deliver two new Air Force One aircraft based on the 747-8 model. These next-generation planes, designated as VC-25Bs, were originally scheduled for delivery in 2024, but development challenges have pushed that timeline to 2027. The engineering challenges of creating these new aircraft are immense. Engineers must incorporate cutting-edge technology while ensuring absolute reliability. These planes just cannot fail. Every system requires redundancies, and every component undergoes testing far beyond commercial standards. The result will be aircraft representing the absolute pinnacle of aviation engineering custom-built flying command posts designed to withstand almost any imaginable threat. One example is how Boeing is designing the plane's specialized electromagnetic pulse or EMP protection systems that shield essential electronics from the effects of nuclear detonations. This technology requires special materials in the aircraft's skin, specialized circuit designs, and custom software algorithms that can maintain communication integrity even during extreme electromagnetic events. The testing process for these systems alone costs millions and involves simulating nuclear effects in specialized facilities. Because of all these technological increases, that $3,433 per minute cost will seem like chump change when this plane finally enters service. Well, if it ever enters service. Bye for now.